So we are on episode six review and it has been absolutely crazy. You know, I normally have like two sticky notes. Look how many sticky notes I have. 18 points, but I can't rumble all day because I have to go to the gym before they close today. You know, I do not miss the gym. All right, so the episode starts with the fight with me and Seven and I played it back because I'm like, it happened so quickly and even Seven says in the room, like it happened so quickly, she don't even remember what happened. The fight from beginning to end, even with security jumping in, it was like 10 seconds long. That shows you like how quick it was. Like we didn't even get a chance to fight. So I didn't see where she hit me somewhere. I don't know because there was like hair and stuff and the camera angle blocked it. You see me hit her on the side of the neck and then security breaks it up. She kicks Natalie a couple times. I go to get kick her. Um, it doesn't look like it even happened. And then we're both being choked out by security. So that's why I got so mad at security when I was upstairs as well, because I was manhandled on the couch. Security told me later, and I would have believed him if two things would have happened. One, he would have given me a genuine apology. And secondly, if he didn't like say probably four or so weird things that week to me. Like I remember when Natalie was arguing with Christina he pulled me aside and he was like, no, but something. And he was mad that I was friends with Natalie at the time. And he was like, yeah, but she went live and said whatever. And then something, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to like put the business all out there because this was a previous episode. So the security was siding with Christina. And he was also saying that Natalie should have never went live. And I'm like, that don't have nothing to do with me. And I'm like, but Christina went live as well. So, I mean, it's, he was like, yeah, but she said like out of control things. I'm like, okay, well, that don't have nothing to do with me, right? So... Security already was kind of looking at me sideways before that fight actually happened. So for him to accidentally fall on top of me as I'm thinking like, okay, if I'm sitting down, a girl jumps on top of me, I'm trying to fight back. You accidentally fall on top of me like 250 pound, I don't even know how much she weighs, 250 pound man. And not only are you crushing me and choking me out, but somehow I hurt my finger. I don't know how. I still to this day don't know how. I'm sure there's like more security um, footage that may have been cut because they don't want it to look like it was security that did it. But security definitely manhandled me, which is why I was yelling at him in the hallway upstairs. Also, um, we're gonna backtrack a little bit because this is how the whole fight and conversation even started. Right before this scene happened, they're late filming all day because people aren't ready on time. They're not there. Whatever the case is, it's always something. Every single day was always backtracking because nobody was ever ready. So on that particular day, something happened. I had recorded the footage with Seven with the stuff in her bathroom. That was way earlier in the day. I had told one of the story producers, they're like, oh, okay, cool. We can use this as part of whatever. Like, great producing, Sarah. And that was like a whole little thing. Well, at some point or another... Natalie and Tanisha, along with some other people in production, talked to Seven. Seven mentioned everything about missing her baby and that she wanted to go, um, or that she's not used to a lot of people. It's just chaotic. She's stressed out and she needs a breather. Okay, so apparently they had a full meeting that was not on camera, that was not with all of us in it. After that meeting, Tanisha, Natalie, and I are in Natalie's room, and Natalie says, Seven wants to leave, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, that's kind of like bullshit because like, I want to leave too. Like Tanisha's got her own place. Like I've already dealt with like the no AC and I'm hungry and it's always loud here. And people are always screaming in the middle of the night. You got Sydney yelling, um, hitting pots and pans together, telling us to wake up, quoting Tanisha from 10 years ago. It's like complete madness, right? So they're like, oh, she wants to leave, whatever. Her sink is dirty and all this other stuff. So I'm like, wait a minute. I just stayed up with Natalie all night cleaning up toilet water because somebody flooded the attic, which is where they said, you know, oh, you can't put Judy in the attic. There was a whole nother level of floor that you guys never see. And that's where some of the camera crew and production were staying. So they're staying upstairs. Apparently they flooded the toilet somehow and the water was dripping through the ceiling. I was like filling up cups of water so it wouldn't get on Natalie's mattress. And she called one of the producers and was like, yo, there's water, blah, blah, blah. I need a new mattress. And the maintenance guy comes up. I mean, we're up for hours. I'm cleaning up water. I'm listening to her talk to everybody. And then comes the end all be all ends up that she has to sleep in my room. 
okay? I had a small bed, a full-size bed, and now I have to share my bed when I don't even like sharing space to begin with. So not only do I have a bad back, the mattress is horrible, now I'm sharing it with Natalie, and I've been up all night cleaning up toilet water, so when they say like Seven wants to leave because there's hair in her sink, I'm like, well, that's petty. But keep in mind, I didn't realize that she had like a whole conversation with the whole team for like an hour or so talking about all these different things. So I didn't know of any of that. I just know she wanted to leave because of that. And Tanisha and Natalie made it seem like, yeah, it's bullshit. And I said, okay. They're like, well, somebody needs to call her out. I'm like, well, call her out on it. And she's like, well, no, because we're the EPs. Like if we call her out, she's gonna wanna quit. But you can call her out. And I'm like, cool, I'll call her out because I do believe that. Like you wanna leave because of hair in the sink and I'm dealing with all this chaotic stuff. Okay. Like you're over exaggerating, I feel like, but keep in mind, I didn't know the whole story. And then Natalie was like, oh yeah, like she's gonna wanna fight. You're gonna have to fight her. I said, no, I'm not fighting her. Yeah, you're gonna have to, Sarah. If you call her out, she said, no, I'm not gonna fight her. Tanisha was like, no, no, Sarah, you don't have to fight her. You don't have to fight her. I was like, yeah, I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting anybody. I'm not fighting her, but I will call her out because I think it's stupid. She wants to leave because of hair in her sink, right? And then Tanisha then, or Natalie brings up the fact again, well, she's definitely going to want to fight you. Tanisha goes, no, no, like I'll stand up in front of you. She's not going to fight you. I'm not going to let a fight happen. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. So of course the conversation happens. There's a plot twist guys, because it was, I thought it was just going to be me telling her like, Hey, you're being a baby. You want to go home because of some hair in the sink. And that's when, of course, the conversation between her and Judy, Judy says, I'm not lying. I said, I believe Judy. I have Judy's back. I don't think she would lie. I don't think that was her. The plot twist is, is Sydney is like, I did it, I did it. And she's twirling around, like bending over, twerking. I don't remember what she did. She's all spinning in circles. And of course, that's when Janelle's like, see, you're doing the most. You don't see us going around in circles. That's that. So then when all this is happening, there's a few things going on in my mind. I'm like, well, damn, I still need to call her out, like quit crying over the damn hair. But then Sydney's doing the most. And then that's when the conversation led back to it. And as um, seven's coming towards me two things I thought were gonna happen one is I thought she would sneak Sydney because it's like Sydney's been in your room been your friend and she like set you up to make you upset even though that's your friend and y'all hang out like during the daytime and during filming so that was number one I thought she was gonna sneak Sydney and keep in mind when you play the whole clip it's like walk across the room five seconds fight ten seconds it's such a short amount of time for you to even register what's happening especially when you got a circus going on around you which of course is the whole I did it thing, you know what I mean? So I think she's gonna sneak Sydney. She then jumps on me and even after the fight, Tanisha was like, sir, I tapped you, I tapped you. Like, so I'm like thinking, wait a minute, but you were supposed to stand up so a fight wouldn't happen. So why are you tapping me for? And then when the fight actually happened, watching the interviews back, it clicked to me. She never intended to stand up because it's like, you're sitting right beside me now, how do you fall in between the couch and you're further away and Natalie's closer? So at that point, if anything, besides like her holding the cup and not spilling her cup, like she was kind of starting to break it apart. But Tanisha to go all the way that way when you were supposed to stand up and stop it, that makes no sense. And then also playing it back, I remembered, you hear me say, Natalie, I don't have my keys. And I was like, oh my gosh. I remember when we had to film like the drive up side, they took my keys to move my car and I always had my keys the entire time of filming. And I said, I need my keys. And Natalie's like, no, you're not going anywhere. And then I was like, wait, is that a setup too? Because you guys took my keys and I didn't get them back for two days. And I think it's because they thought I was gonna leave after all the madness. But it's almost like you took my keys before the confrontation with seven happened and before the fight happened. So I couldn't leave if I wanted to. So when I say like I could leave, I live down the street. I don't live right down the street. It's like an hour, 25 minute drive. But of course it's not like a flight home. I still could drive home in like an hour and a half. So yeah, that was quite shady. And <laughs> anyways, moving along, we gonna skip right past the rest of that. Not even skip past it because we just addressed everything, but moving on. Um, to the, Tanisha then says, Sarah's favorite line is that she's white, but no, like that's one of the other times where they're like twisting my words because I was responding to, and I said, what did she say? Did she say, cause I'm white? It's cause I'm white. So it's not me just saying that out of nowhere, like Tanisha's making it sound. Seven had said, I would fight you if I didn't think you're white, da, 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 da. 
So that's why I said, wait, what did she say? She said, because I'm white. Like, so what are you talking about? Tanisha flipped that out of context, which I don't like because there had been multiple times where Tanisha and I had hung out. She talked to me. She was in my room. She would get ready in my room because my room was cleaner than Natalie's room. And then I feel like she would play me on camera and then watching it back, she also played me in interviews. So I don't appreciate that because I've always really liked Tanisha. I've always liked her. So it's very disappointing to see her not only kind of play me in the house, but play me in interviews as well. Like it's, it's really frustrating. All right, so after the fight, I say, okay, well, why don't you just send Seven home? And she goes, uh, this is the baddie's house. Like, I can't send her home. I, I just, I'm just here or something. And I'm thinking, but you just threatened the day before to send Sydney home like you're really going to send her home. So if you're going on a power trip saying you can send Cindy home, then when I'm saying, well, why don't you send Seven home? She's like, oh, I can't do that. So why did you say that yesterday? I'm confused. All right, next. This scene was actually pretty funny. Janelle says to um, to Seven and I believe Christina and maybe Sydney was in the room. She said, you know, Sarah likes to correlate things with herself. Like she'll be like, oh, some one time someone stepped on my toe and da 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 somebody. So that's not the thing. The thing is, is like I cleaned for three hours. People are dropping food in my room. They're taking my stuff. They're not giving it back. I cleaned up toilet water for hours and got no sleep. And you're complaining about hair in the sink. So it's like, I get what you're saying and it's like funny what Janelle said, but that's really not the case whatsoever. And even after the fight, when I say, which by the way, I still wear a brace on my finger to get it like straight because it's still crooked. It's crooked, it's still swollen, it has a knot on it three months later. And I wear a three carat diamond ring on this finger. Like I don't have time to have a crooked finger for the rest of my life because of an incident on Batty's ATL and security and just like the whole Thing in the beginning like no so I do normally wear this it's just kind of distraction for video that's why I took it off for this okay so in the room I told Natalie I said yo my finger and I was like my finger and I'm very pain tolerant so I can be really hurt without knowing it and like I walked on a foot that was sprained in three places for like two weeks before it swelled up so big that I couldn't even um, put on a heel. So I went to the doctor. I'm very pain tolerant. So if I'm like, my finger hurts, my finger hurts, something, right? Natalie mentions like, oh yeah, my finger too. And it's like the same hand. Oh, it's like meant to be we're sisters or something. And it's like, okay. And this is the whole like Janelle talking about the toe thing, how I feel. It's like hair in the sink, clean for three hours and toilet water dripping and sharing a bed. Now, you hurt your finger too. You broke a fingernail, Natalie. You literally broke a fingernail. And then I go to the doctor and find out my finger is fractured. Those are not the same thing. Breaking a fingernail and your finger being fractured, not the same thing. And even later when I addressed my hair being pulled out because clumps of my hair was coming out, she said, well, my hair got pulled too, Sarah, get over it. And that's when I realized like she wasn't really there for me. After all those times I had been there for her, that was the moment when she didn't care about my finger and my hair being pulled out and compared it to her. And she said that, well, her got hair, her hair got pulled too. I said, your wig got snatched off and thrown out the window. Her hair was in protective style braids. So how is a wig being snatched, hair ripped from the scalp the same, or a broken fingernail and a fractured finger the same? Like it's not. So I'm tired of people downplaying and acting like, I'm complaining or I'm this or I'm that when it's really them and then they flip it on you. So no negative, that's not cute. And that's when I realized like you are not my friend for the millionth time because I've already had to go through this so many times and I'm such a nice person that I always like take in apologies and stuff and I give people chances. And when they say like, I care about you, I love you, you're my best friend, I always have your back, I'll never let this happen. And then they keep doing it. Like I'm finally over it. Like I've learned my lesson enough. Like came together to put a business and then the money OnlyFans went to hell, conversation went to hell, now Baddies ATL went to hell, like I'm done, it's over. Like I'm not gonna keep um, going back and forth and forgiving, like you cool, I don't hate you, you over there, but we're not friends and we're not going to be friends, I'm over you. Okay, so after the fight, Natalie picks me up, she's joking, oh, she's joking with me, like hugging me, but then she mentions in the interview, Sarah's screaming and crying about her finger. I didn't scream or cry about my finger at all. And secondly, if I did scream and cry, it would be justified because my finger was fractured, but I didn't scream and cry. So at that moment, Natalie played me an interview, which I don't like. All right, Tanisha then says she can't send anybody home. I already addressed that. 
Sydney then asked Tanisha to stay the night and she's like having a conversation on the couch. And it's funny because Tanisha's like, no, I need to go regroup. I needed this. I needed that. And I'm like, so now Tanisha needs to regroup. Janelle needs to regroup. I get why everybody wants to regroup because it's so stressful. But honestly, in that moment, I was the most stressed out because of just everything in general, guys. And Natalie would always like complain to me about production and camera starting late and Christina not being ready and Sydney messing with Judy and this not happening. Literally, she would complain to me all day, every day. And then as soon as the cameras would come on, she would flip it and be like, so what do you want to complain about now, Sarah? What do you want to complain about? I'm like, wait, you've been complaining to me for three hours and we need to talk about my finger in the scene. And now it's me complaining once again. Like, what are you talking about? Like the whole narrative of that is ridiculous. And by the way, it's about the storm for real because the clouds just took over the sun. There's water. Wow, that's crazy. All right, next, Tanisha grabs me and says, Natalie needs a one-on-one -on -one with seven. And then that's when I say, I'm gonna leave. And Natalie says, no, you can't leave, Sarah. Everybody else can leave. Why can't Sarah leave? Let me leave for a chance. Tanisha leaves, Seven and Janelle about to leave, Christina been leaving, half the cast been leaving, why can't Sarah leave? Because you need to come in my room and complain all night, like usual, and me to hold your hand and do this and do that for you. Um, next, Sydney randomly says to, out of nowhere, when this is all going on, like, I'm gonna go F up Judy and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, now she's trying to get attention. It's like, we're having a real moment and the cameras are filming it. And Sydney's trying to flip it on her to get cameras on her. Okay, whatever, like do your little act. Judy then goes off on Sydney. Sydney told Judy to, ill. Sydney told Judy to pull her dick out. I don't know why she said that. And then of course that's what Judy leads to um, responding back and then throwing apple juice on her. And I didn't even know any of this happened and watching it back actually really hurt my feelings because for one, I didn't know what happened. I was dealing with my own madness between Natalie, Tanisha, Seven and just everybody. And when I saw that, I felt really, really bad because Judy was on the opposite side of the house. I didn't realize everything that she was going through. I know she had it hard, but I was just so consumed of how hard I had it that I really couldn't look out for Judy like I wanted to. Even though I had her back when we were filming, like, stop doing this, like, Judy's not the maid, like, leave Judy alone. I wish I would have had her back more. I didn't know any of that was happening. And it really, like, it, like, honestly, truly hurts me that she was so upset in that moment, which makes sense why she wanted to leave, but... If I would have known that, you know, I'm a DIY person. I will take things apart. I would have literally pulled Judy's bed apart or even just taken the couple mattresses and shared my room with her and let her sleep in my room. And in hindsight, I really r wish that's what would have happened. I wish I would have known. I wish I would have let her come in my room and things would have been better and she could have stayed longer because, yo, that was horrible. I felt so bad for Judy in that moment. Okay. Sydney then starts running around the house and then she says, Sarah, you got me out the house. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Sydney? This isn't even about you. I was so confused. I keep in mind, I didn't even know all that craziness with Judy had just happened. I'm still heated and Sydney's trying to walk out the door making it about her. Seven then said, um, there's no beef with Sarah. Natalie said she has beef with you. Okay, so in the house, this is pretty interesting because apparently... It finally came out, and I didn't know this before. Tanisha told Seven I was talking about her. I was never talking about it, Seven. Never have, never did. First time I started talking about Seven was on these reviews. I never talked about Seven in the house. I think she's a really pretty girl. I liked her. I didn't have an issue with her. Like, she didn't bother me. Um, so, for Tanisha to say, Sarah's talking crap about you, no, that never happened. So, Tanisha got in Seven's ear. And then also at the same time, Natalie got in my ear because the entire time in the house, she kept saying that Christina, Janelle, and Seven were talking about me. Seven's still mad about this YouTube video where I called her a bully. Um, Janelle is bashing my body because she thinks hers is better than mine. And Christina, because she always had an issue with me, but she doesn't know that that one-on-one, -on -one, when I said, no, get out of her room. You don't want me to talk to Christina. You don't want me to talk to Christina for two seconds. In that moment, like when Christine and I did talk after the her and Natalie fight, she told me that she didn't have an issue with me. And I said, yo, you've been coming for me online and doing this and that. And she told me like, no, Natalie wanted me to do this. Natalie, I said, even at the conversation, she was like, no, Natalie. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I was like, we just got played. Like we literally all just got played. 
And then going back, it makes sense why Christina kept saying, I'm changing the narrative. Oh, you want to paint this narrative? I'm changing the narrative. So the narrative was for Christina to have an issue with me. But then Christina was like, no, Sarah, I actually like you. Why would I fight you? There's no reason to fight you. So there's that. Um, we, these, we then see Seven crying in the bathroom that she wants to leave and it's too much. And I honestly do feel bad for her because there was more to it. And at that point, I do feel like seeing her side, I was antagonizing her by bringing up the hair and her wanting to leave, whatever else. But it was more so my frustration of dealing with everybody and the craziness and just everything that's going on. So... Um, I do feel bad for pushing seven and confronting her, but I was just saying literally what we were all thinking me. And that's why I said, I said what we're all thinking and seven's thinking like, who is we? Well, me, Natalie and Tanisha, we all had a damn meeting about it before I confronted you about what we were all thinking, which I thought you were crying more so about the hair and the sink and living dirty. Okay. So then Natalie has a sit down with me and Christina in the boardroom and, oh, I don't like this. So. Christina, I feel like, was kind of talking about me in the room with Seven, like Sarah, this and that. But then in the boardroom, we had a moment, and it was like, yo, we've been doing this together. We've been doing marketing. We've been doing promo. We've been doing this for months. Like, these girls just came in. I felt like I had a real genuine moment with Christina, so I was shocked to see that she was talking about me in a negative way to Seven in the room because I thought me and Christina were on the same page. But then again, there's, like, so much drama. Things are, like... It's madness and, um, you know, even like a couple weeks ago when I said from the first fight. So when Natalie and Christina got into a fight, I had mentioned like I'm on Natalie's side in the sense of not was Natalie right or wrong in that moment, but if I'm your friend, I'm going to have your back. And then I'll tell you behind closed doors, yo, you were wrong. You shouldn't have done that, right? But if you're my friend, I have loyalty. I'll have your back. But even in that moment, a few things happened, which Natalie was upset about. She was mad that I laughed when her wig went out the window. And she's like, oh, you're laughing at me, Sarah? I'm like, I'm not laughing at you, Natalie. It's just comical that what kind of house are we living in? Your wig just flew off the second floor out the window. That's comical. I'm not laughing at you. And of course, Christina was like, oh, yeah, it's funny. So then another point where she got mad was security was shoving Christina. And I said, yo, get her away from the window. Get her away from the window. So then she felt like I had Christina's back in that moment. I'm like, no, just because I don't want Christina to get pushed out the window and possibly die doesn't mean that I'm on Christina's side and not yours. And then the third thing was, is when they were on the bed and the uh, security wasn't breaking them apart, I told Natalie, I said, yo, let go of her hair. And she was mad about that. So when I posted, I'm on Natalie's side, it's because I'm Natalie's friend in the moment. My loyalty was to her. You know, we put all this this project together. We're all here because of a certain reason. And my loyalty was to her in that moment. So that's why it. I can understand why Christina was like, yo, you're on her side. I'm like, no, it was just to clear up the laughing at the wig, the wig out the window, let her hair go. Don't push Christina out the window. That was all I was trying to convey, but that could definitely come across as I get it, Christina. So yeah, my bad for that. But at the moment, of course, I had her side. All right, Natalie then tells me to apologize to Seven and says Seven wanted to say sorry to me. And I'm like, but she didn't say sorry to me. Like, let me take a moment. Like, she's like, don't let um, this little pettiness of her being upset about hair uh, tear apart what we put together. The three of us, we've been doing Miami. We've been doing this. We've been doing that. And marketing, and OnlyFans, and blah, blah, blah. Like, don't let them ruin this. So I feel like, I mean, I don't know, but... I'm assuming that when Seven watched that, that was probably new to her because that's why I'd ex been expressing, I thought you were crying about hair in the sink. And yeah, man, so it's been complete madness. And really when the hair, you're gonna see even more of a shift when my hair actually comes out. And then of course, when I go to the doctor, which you already saw in the preview, and then they give you a little clip to the um, a later episode where I'm calling Natalie out on all her surgeries because at that point I had had it. I felt used, I felt disrespected for the millionth time from her. And the thing is, is like, if you wanna have your body done, okay, cool. Like Janelle has openly admitted to a BBL. I don't bash her, I don't say anything about her. But my issue is, is that if you've had um, a face full of injections and Botox and fillers and you've had your entire body done, breast lift, implants, lipo, and, ass shots and all these fillers and then you're bashing other people and 
talking about their body. That's what I have an issue with. So it's not about somebody having their body done. I could care less. Like, good for you. Your body looks amazing. Cool. You paid for it. You earned it. Whatever. But what I don't like is the pot calling the kettle black when you've had all this work done and you've bashed other girls on a regular basis. So that's what you see in that clip. And I'm not playing any games. I am over the situation. Um, for people to say they're so booked and busy, but they can be online on multiple platforms and write about you and blow up your phone talking about, I'll get you canceled and I'll make up these lies and all this and that. I'm like, but the thing is, is my life speaks for itself. I'm a good person. You see how I live. Like, <laughs> so for you to make up these lies, it's like, mm, like I get it, but my whole life is a flex to you at this point. So I'm not gonna just continue to go online and address you every single day. Um, unlike you, I actually am busy and I don't have the time, which is why I'm doing this review six days later and I'm not going to entertain this madness for no paycheck. So if I need to entertain this, I need to be properly paid because I have other things to do and I'm also working on a lot of other projects. And even the reason I'm wearing this because I had a great audition earlier today and I have some other really great projects that are coming. So we will see how the next episode is tomorrow. But I can already tell you, I know I'm a little going to be a little bit angry because there is a call out moment in the fitness um, scene. And I am aware that me calling somebody out has pretty much been cut, which is annoying because then it just looks like, Oh, a little complaint from Sarah and then these other things are happening but actually the fitness thing was a huge turnaround for me because I go off and I'm like what is this this is a joke nobody's working out we can't do one thing serious you're sitting here trying to instruct the class you're this you're that and I'm like working out like this is basically a warm-up so I'm like whatever I'm literally tired of watching these episodes because it's like that's not what even happened but Anyways, I'm going to be a good sport. I'm going to keep doing the reviews for you guys because I love you guys. And I got to get to the gym because they are closing soon. But I love you. Until next week. See you later.